Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you all about that merc with a mouth. Best served, piping hot, with a side dish of strong profanity and violence. Deadpool. Now you may recognise this video or have a slight bit of deja vu, as we covered Deadpool years ago in a video that's since been lost. But there's so, so much juicy info that's come out since then, you're getting a r, -r, -r refresh baby. But how did David Fincher and Captain Avatar himself James Cameron help create Deadpool's first movie? What are Deadpool 2's very, very well hidden cameos? And just what in the hell is happening with Deadpool 3? I wanna hear snarks about Stark's death. Snarks about Stark, I say. Two out of three of those questions, well, two and a half, sort of, you'll see why, are going to be answered. So really reinforce that fourth wall as it's about to be absolutely smashed in by Mexican cuisine and blood. So, so much blood. As we take you through 101 facts about Deadpool. Number one. All right, so first things first, if you've been living right under a big ball of slag, Deadpool is a Marvel Comics anti-hero created by Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nikiaza. He's a mutant like the X-Men who, unlike the X-Men, knows he's fictional. Number two. Worth noting, by the way, that while Deadpool is known for smashing through the fourth wall, as previously mentioned, he wasn't the first Marvel character to do so. She-Hulk actually did that first all the way back in 1989, Taylor Swift style. Number three. Also, according to the comics, he has a crush on Thor, which is a good time to mention his pansexuality, which makes him one of the first big screen LGBT superheroes. Lovely. Number four. He's also a, uh, well, fully fledged murder machine. In fact, there have been two special comic book series in which he murders every Marvel superhero and supervillain. Those are called Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe and Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe again, by the way. Number five. When he's not, you know, killing them, Deadpool has an interesting relationship with other heroes. For example, he's respected Cap since he was a kid. Him and Spidey share a comic together in which he sort of wants to be Spider-Man's best friend with benefits, maybe. And in Deadpool The End, he even ends up sort of romantically involved with Captain Marvel. Sort of. Number six. Since we're in a multiverse of madness these days, it's also worth mentioning there are multiple Deadpools. For instance, in the comic Captain America Who Won't Wield the Shield, there's a, uh, bad guys of World War II version. He's called Weapon X. No, no, really, really. Number seven. In fact, there's a whole team of different Deadpools from across the multiverse. The Deadpool core was made up of a variety of them, including Pandapool, Kidpool, and Ladypool, whose title is also the name of a place I'm banned from entering. Number eight. Oh, it should be said that an evil version of Deadpool called Dreadpool tried to kill all these Deadpools in another killy title, Deadpool Kills Deadpool. Deadpool doesn't sound like a word anymore, does it? Well, strap in, it's only fact eight. Number nine. In case it's not clear enough already that Deadpool loves Moira, enter Deadpool Illustrated, a series in which he killed major literature characters outside of the Marvel Universe. This included Sherlock Holmes, Count Dracula, and all the little women. Any chance of a crossover there, Greta Gerwig? Number 10. Another character Deadpool inspired is Gwenpool. Gwenpool first appeared on a variant cover as a hybrid between Gwen Stacy and Deadpool. She became so popular with cosplayers afterwards that Marvel gave her her own comic book series, with a lot of the same features as Deadpool himself. Number 11. Another important part of Deadpool's whole thing, he's basically immortal. He can die again and again and again, but thanks to the Weapon X program, he regenerates and regrows any lost body parts, even if they first appear like weird baby hands. Number 12. While he was stuck in Crossmoor Mental Institution in England, a female psychiatrist fell in love with him. Hmm, I can't think where I've uh, de seen that before. Anyway, apparently she kept his locked off body parts in her fridge, which is perfectly lovely and normal, eh? Number 13. As a quick aside, DC's Rebirth line series gave Harley Quinn her own Deadpool. That's sorta. Red Tool, also known as Wayne Wilkins, appears in her comic who has a suspiciously similar origin story to DP. This is a lovingly done parody, though with some teeth as some consider Deadpool a ripoff of DC's Deathstroke. Number 14. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, the other crazy psychiatrist. These body parts then fuse together to become Evil Deadpool, a clone of him with two right hands. I'm telling you this, by the way, to reveal the plot of a later movie, because they're definitely going to adapt this, right? They have to. Number 15. Anyway, Deadpool's comic debut came in New Mutants number 98 in 1991, when he was hired to attack said New Mutants. The base character is certainly there, but there aren't any fourth wall breaks or particularly OTT violence. Number 16. In this appearance, though, the amount he speaks is commented upon, and that's thanks to Spider-Man, in a way. In an interview, co-creator Rob Liefeld said that Wolverine and Spider-Man were the two properties he was competing with, so he made his own, with Deadpool and Cable. Number 17. Anyway, Mr. Pool is now very pop-pool-er. 
crikey, I'm sorry. I passed out and the kids put me in the dino costume. And then they put me in the pool. For instance, he was on Empire Magazine's list of the 50 greatest comic book characters at 45, although he's probably gone up now, and placed 31st on IGN's list of top 100 comic book heroes. Number 18. Anyway, his popularity probably went up since his first ever movie, the hugely successful X-Men Origins Wolverine. Yep, the 2009 movie that everybody absolutely loved had Wade Wilson in it, played by Ryan Reynolds. His first scenes were Deadpool-esque, but later he became this weird being that had loads of other mutant abilities and couldn't talk? Number 19. Ryan Reynolds, and indeed the audience, does not remember this fondly. Reynolds, that babe cake, described the experience as very frustrating, but was essentially told, play this version of Deadpool or someone else will. He also said he wrote every line he spoke in the movie as the script didn't give him any dialogue. Number 20. Reynolds said he knew how badly this was going to go over with fans, so he told Fox as much. In fact, the movie actually leaked a month and a half before it was due to go out and met with huge fury. Fox wanted him to reshoot, but instead he simply replied with, I told you so. Number 21. This is what led Reynolds to write a letter to Fox saying he will take on a new movie script he's been sent called Green Lantern unless they went ahead with a solo Deadpool movie. They said no, he made Green Lantern and we all suffered ever after. Number 22, uh, ooh. Way before any of this, by the way, DP in the comics described himself as looking like a cross between Ryan Reynolds and a Sharpay, so it was kind of written in the stars, or paper or something, that it was going to be Ryan. Number 23. That being said, though, while on the topic of Deadpool's comics face, Asgardian trickster Loki wants cursed Deadpool to look like Tom Cruise. This was to ruin his life, as he would then be constantly recognised, and... Comics are weird, man. Number 24. Eventually, Reynolds and co shot some test footage of what their version of Deadpool would look like, violent, swearing and silly, just like your mama used to make. That footage then leaked onto the internet to massive support, giving them a bargaining chip against the big bad fox. Number 25. It's worth noting, by the way, that this whole back and forth caused Ryan Reynolds a lot of personal anguish. In fact, in an interview with GQ, he even claimed it caused him to have a nervous breakdown because he was so committed to having this movie made. Number 26. At different times of the script's birthing? Two titan heavyweights of cinema helped spread the good word to Fox. Yep, James Big Blue People Cameron and David Dark and Foreboding Fincher were both very excited by the script and egged on Fox to make it. Number 27. Incidentally, by the way, we don't know who leaked the test footage. Many, many, many clues point to it either being Ryan Reynolds, director Tim Miller, or writers Wernick and Reese. Ryan has said he's 70% sure it wasn't him, and Wernick has said the culprit's name rhymes with Brian Reynolds. Who could it have been? Number 28. And so the first Deadpool film was made and released on the 12th of February 2016. Hard to believe that this was actually Tim Miller's first directorial job, before he was working pretty much entirely as a visual effects artist. Number 29. The whole film, by the way, was shot in 48 days. Now that's really quite slender, usually the average movie takes about 60 days. Number 30. In case it's not made clear enough by now, Ryan Reynolds was not just an actor in this here movie. He was also a producer, script doctor, an editor, and a marketing exec. Number 31. In case you were wondering such a thing, it took Ryan Reynolds 45 minutes to put on that dang suit. 45 minutes! No word on what it takes to get him out of it though, probably just a key string and a smile. Anyway, he took that suit home afterwards despite that trauma. Number 32. As well as that, it took four hours to apply the prosthetics to Deadpool's post-scarring face. Four! That's 240 minutes! 14,400 seconds! Six episodes of The Chase! Number 33. There was a lot of fan anxiety, or anxiety, I guess, over whether or not this movie would be rated R and for adults. On the 1st of April 2015, April Fool's Day, Reynolds said on Twitter it would be PG-13, which ruffled some feathers, let me tell ya. Number 34. Luckily, later that same day, a video interview with Reynolds and Mario Slater-Lopez was released, which gleefully told everyone it was indeed R-rated, as well as providing a first look at Reynolds in costume. A good day was had by all. Number 35. One of the first people to see the movie was Conor McGrath, a young Deadpool superfan who met Reynolds through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Tragically, he died in April of 2016. Reynolds dedicated his Critics' Choice Award to his memory and to the memory of another nine-year-old fan, Grace Bowen. Number 36. Speaking of awards, by the way, the movie was the first ever live-action comic book movie to be nominated for two Golden Globes, specifically Best Picture, Comedy or Musical, and Best Performance in a Motion Picture, Comedy or Musical. Number 37. 
As you may have already realised, this was back when 20th Century Fox was a thing, before it was bought by Disney. This movie therefore does not take place in Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, Disney had the rights to Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who Fox wanted to use, and so, a deal had to be made. Number 38. You see, Fox owned all the Fantastic Four and X-Men Universe characters, which included Ego the Living Planet. Disney wanted that character for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and so a little swap was made. Ah, diplomacy. Well, Disney bought everything now, so there's no need for that except for the Sony, but, you know, still. Number 39. At one point, in reference to Wade's love of golden girls, he can be seen wearing a B. Arthur tank top. A nice easter egg for sure, but that cost $10,000. How? Well, that's how much the rights to her image cost. Number 40. Speaking of B. Arthur, Wade loves her so much that in the comics, the Deadpool Core spaceship is called the B. Arthur. Number 41. Another cheeky little ref that was probably far, far cheaper was to that of MCU Overlord and my hero, Kevin Feige. When Wade delivers the pizza, it's from Feige's Pizza. If they're anything like your cinematic universes, it'll be sure tasty. I love the man. The meaning of life. The opening sequence pays tribute to a co-creator of the character Rob Liefeld. Look very carefully at the Starbucks cup and hey look, Rob L. Mind you, that could be a reference to my family actor Robert Lindsay. You never know with Wade and Co. Number 43. Dr. Kilbrew, with the most on-the-nose name in the world, is a Deadpool comics villain who is almost going to appear in the movie alongside Ajax. However, they realised that this would overcomplicate the story, and so Dr. Kilbrew would have to murder a cup of tea elsewhere. Number 44. Another X-Men character called Maro appears very briefly in the movie too. Maro stands out in a crowd by the fact that there are some sharp bones sticking out of her skin. You can see a lady with the same affliction in the Weapon X clinic. Number 45. Look carefully at the names on the Deadpool from which Wade gets a superhero name. These include a lot of celebs like Kanye West, Mike Tyson, Shia LaBeouf and Miley Cyrus, but weirdly even TJ Miller and Reynolds himself appear on said board. Number 46. No Marvel film is complete without a cameo from Stan Lee. R.I.P. King. This one is no different and Stan appears as a DJ in a strip club. He actually claimed it was his least favourite cameo he had done because he wasn't actually in a strip club and was to quote him damn mad about it. Damn. Number 47. There's a song in the movie all about Captain Deadpool and his various trials and tribulations, which is gosh darn catchy. Well, that song was originally made by Team Headkick, some rappers who had made the song previously, but all about a video game version of Deadpool. Number 48. At one point, TJ Miller's weasel says to Wade about Vanessa, go get her, tiger. Now, some think this is a reference to Mary Jane Watts on Spider-Man fame. Others think it's just an appreciation of the word tiger. But what do you think, everybody? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 49. Now, towards the end of Deadpool, we have a little battle going down, yelling timber on an aircraft carrier. This was meant to be more specifically a helicarrier, like S.H.I.E.L.D. have in the MCU. But unfortunately, they could not get the rights cleared. Sad times. Number 50. The movie grossed $132.8 million in its domestic opening weekend, becoming the first R-rated film to open to over $100 million and breaking the 12-year-old record set by The Matrix Reloaded. Number 51. This record was then broken by its own sequel, Deadpool 2, which we'll start talking about right about now. <laughs> A sequel to Deadpool was discussed way before the first film ever came out in the winter of 2015. Number 52. Unlike the first film, it would not be directed by Tim Miller. He walked away from the movie, citing the ever-elusive creative differences as the reason right during pre-production. Instead, then, the directorial reins went to John Wick's David Leitch. Number 53. Weirdly enough, though, that's not two petition signers wanted. A fan petition was made for Quentin Tarantino to direct the sequel, and 17,000 people signed it. Number 54. As I say, this movie made bank, yo. It grossed over $785 million worldwide, becoming the ninth highest grossing film of 2018, the highest grossing X-Men film of all time, and as mentioned, broke its own record. Until King of Taxi Driver Joker came along. Number 55. On March 3rd, 2017, the Deadpool 2 teaser short called No Good Deed leaked online. Previously, it was shown before screenings of Logan, as you can see by the fact that Logan is on the theatre billboard in the background. Number 56. This short movie, a clear parody of Superman, has a couple of other weird things going on too. Firstly, there's a Stan Lee cameo, which specifically refers to him as Stan Lee. There are also posters for the cancelled show Firefly, which stars Morena Baccarin, also known as Vanessa, in a big role. Number 57. Also on the phone box Wade is changing in, you can see graffiti saying Nathan Summers coming soon, referring to Cable by his real name and misspelling the word coming in a very humorous way. 
Number 58. Another promo teaser was made for the movie too, which parodied both Bob Ross and his TV show The Joy of Painting. There are lots of references peppered all over this, like in the colour list for example, which has a colour called Betty White, a golden girl herself. Number 59. In case you wanted to know, both Deadpool movies were shot in Vancouver, Canada, which is nice because not only is Wade Canadian, but also Ryan Reynolds is too. More like Canadian Wilson, am I right? <laughs> uh. Number 60. As previously mentioned, Deadpool's long-suffering comics partner Cable appears in this here movie too, played by Thanos himself, Josh Brolin. Deadpool obviously knows this, calling him Thanos specifically and even comparing him to the Winter Soldier. Because, you know, the arm thing. Number 61. But Cable was almost someone else. According to Collider, Brad Pitt was almost a squinty-eye angry time traveller. However, he passed on the project ultimately due to scheduling conflicts. However, Brad Pitt did show up in the movie. Number 62. Yes, Brad Pitt's in the film as X-Force member Vanisher. He appears on screen for about one second, yet apparently this cameo was shot over a two-hour window. Worth noting too that Vanisher was X-Men's second ever villain. Bonus fact for you there. You're welcome, Hans. Number 63. Speaking of surprise cameos, Matt Damon has a strange role you may not have noticed in the movie. The weighty redneck who's talking in detail about his toilet duties. The other guy is cult actor Alan Tudyk too. Nice. Nintendo 64. Speaking of hidden cameos, did you know that Ryan Reynolds has a mystery cameo too? No, not as Deadpool, you bloody squirt. Reynolds is also playing surprise villain Juggernaut too. I know, wow. Number 65. Worth noting, by the way, that Rob Liefeld's idea of who to cast as Cable was a little different. He wanted Maximus, etc. himself, Russell Crowe to play him, and even tweeted him saying as such, leading to a slightly awkward and tense exchange. Number 66. One of the breakout stars of the movie was Peter, just a swell guy he wanted to do some X-Force in. He's played by Rob Delaney after Ryan Reynolds saw him in the TV show Catastrophe. Number 67. Speaking of the X-Force, by the way, in this scene they all die pretty much as soon as their first mission starts, which, let's face it, is bloody hilarious. Originally, though, this scene was going to be the team landing on a minefield and blowing up one by one, before Reynolds realised a minefield in the middle of the city would make no sense whatsoever. Number 68. Another point that mixes both the previous facts together in a nice little bow, isn't that nice, eh? Is that originally the post credit scene was going to be all about going back in time to save Peter from X-Forcing. And while yes, that does appear in the post credit scene now, it's just one of many things he gets up to while time travelling. Number 69. Yeah. The scene in which Wade dies lasts for a frankly agonisingly long time. Fun fact for you, this was directly inspired by Monty Python. Also, apparently, this is the short version. Number 70. Another fun fact for you about said death scene. You hear the really sad music in the background there? Well, in case you're getting a bit of deja vu to the ears, that's because this is the same music that plays after Wolverine gets mutant kebabbed at the end of Logan. Number 71. Speaking of which, by the way, that fetching little Logan music box thingy Wade has while he's all sad at the beginning wasn't CG. It was real and actually worked. That seems to be the only one that works in the world, and Ryan Reynolds has kept it. Number 72. At one point in the movie, a new sticker can be seen that reads Christopher Plummer turned down a role in Deadpool 2. This is a reference to Christopher Plummer taking on Kevin Spacey's role in the movie All the Money in the World after he dropped out for reasons. Number 73. So there's a big twist pretty much from the get-go with Paul 2 that Vanessa dies. Some people accuse the movie of fridging the character, meaning to kill off a woman specifically to motivate a male one, which isn't cool. <laughs> Won't get it. Reynolds says the decision to do this was based on the fact that the more pain Deadpool's in, the funnier he is. It was almost even worse than that, they were going to have a baby together and Vanessa was still going to die, but they decided that was too much, which is a lot coming from them. Number 74. Deadpool 2 starts, well, okay, 15 minutes in anyway, with a montage that rips James Bond's opening sequences right off. Bizarrely, this is soundtracked by an original song by the actual Celine Dion. Reynolds approached her to sing the song and she agreed because her son loves Deadpool. Number 75. The song was also meant to be more of a parody, but took on a life of its own because of Dion's voice, with the music magazine The Music calling it confusingly inspiring, which is incidentally what I want my epitaph to say. This single also reached number one in Quebec, which is fitting. Number 77. A little deep cut here for you. A taxi can be seen advertising a travel agency called Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight are a team of Canadian superheroes in the comic books because yes, Canadians need heroes too. Number 77. Julian Dennison plays Rusty Collins, also known as Fire Fist, and was apparently hand-selected by Ryan Reynolds himself because of his work in the Oscar award-winning Taika Waititi's Hunt for the Wilder People. Number 78. Sadly, Deadpool 2 also marked a tragedy. 
On August 16, 2017, a stunt woman named Joy Harris died while filming a stunt on a motorcycle. Production stopped for two days, and the film is dedicated to her memory. Number 79. In the trailer for the movie, Deadpool briefly mentions the Sisterhood of the Travelling Pants from 2005. Which, if you're British, by the way, that's a really gross title. Anyway, Ryan Reynolds' real-life wife, Blake Lively, starred in that movie. That lucky woman, for a multitude of reasons. Number 80. During production of DP2, the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the Canadian Children's Wish Foundation were allowed onto set to visit to meet Reynolds and the crew. Now you may be thinking, but that isn't a suitable environment for kids. And you're right, but Ryan had this repost. If my kid went through a fraction of the bleep that they deal with daily, I think they can watch whatever they want. Number 81. You may notice there's a little brief X-Men cameo in this movie of, uh, well, the X-Men. The footage was shot while they were shooting X-Men Dark Phoenix, which, okay look, this is a small gripe, but that movie's set in the 90s and this is definitely not set in the 90s. So unless there's some sort of time portal thing going on here, that's a massive mistake and oh god, I will not miss the Fox X-Men's absolutely ruined continuity. Number 82. When the members of Deadpool's X-Force jump out the plane, they form a symbolic X in the air. That's a nice touch, you know, before they all die. Number 83. A smaller easter egg for you here, when Deadpool is drawing up his plans to rescue Russell with the X-Force, you can see a picture of Prisoner 24601. This is of course a reference to Jean Valjean in Les Miserables, a part played in the movie by, you guessed it, Rob DeLay- oh no, it was Hugh Jackman. Number 84. The movie ends with Deadpool obtaining the ability to time travel, which, you know, was never gonna end well for anyone. One of the trips he takes involves killing his X-Men Origins self. Well, this almost never happened. X-Men Origins was shot on film, meaning there were no digital backups, and that particular section of the original was damaged. They eventually found another copy deep, deep, deep in a vault, however. Number 85. Also, the very last time jump part, when Wade deliberates over killing baby Hitler, was actually deleted when in theatres. It was only released as part of a supercut later on. Number 86. Fox had a bit of trouble when Alita Battle Angel, the film that people definitely saw, had to move from December 21st, 2018 to February 2019. So by September they announced that slot would be filled by a PG-13 re-release version of Deadpool 2. Number 87. Deadpool and Deadpool 2 are obviously very R-rated. So you may ask why on earth Reynolds would do something like this after fighting for an R rating for so long. Well, a portion of the film's profits went to charity. One dollar of every ticket sold went to the Thud Cantor charity movement. Number 88. This version of the film itself is a parody of The Princess Bride. Deadpool is selling Fred Savage, its original star, a bedtime story version of Deadpool 2 that avoids the raunchier stuff to pass the rating. Number 89. This meant that the film is essentially the same as Deadpool 2, except with some bits trimmed and edited to clear a PG-13 rating for violence and language. Which, you know, it's quite a lot really. Despite that though, Once Upon a Deadpool did still get a 15 rating in the UK from the BBFC. Meaning the whole venture on this side of the pond was completely pointless. Number 90. Once Upon a Deadpool received mixed reviews from critics because of this. Some thinking it actually made it funnier, others saying it was a portrayal of the character. On Rot Tom, it's got 54% compared to the original, which received 82%. Number 91. After this, it was rumoured for a long time that an X-Force movie was on the way. Bizarre, really, given they literally all died in horrible ways, but there we are. Cabin in the Woods director Drew Goddard was even attached to direct. Number 92. X-Force was going to be an R-rated, raunchy take on the X-Men, featuring Deadpool, Domino, and Cable again. Note this is past tense, by the way. Number 93. You may be wondering how Goddard reacted to the X-Force featuring Deadpool 2 before mostly being ceremoniously killed. Well, apparently quite well. He laughed and said, I remember reading that scene and just cackling with delight, specifically because it was the very last thing you'd expect to happen in one of these movies. Number 94. He probably wasn't cackling with laughter for very long though, after the project died when Disney bought Fox. Rob Liefeld wasn't really very happy either saying, pour one out for old X-Force, victim of the merger, 800 million grosser easy. Number 95. After the acquisition of 21st Century Fox by the Walt Disney Company was announced in December of 2017, and then completed in March 2019, Disney CEO Bob Iger said that Deadpool would be integrated with the Marvel Cinematic Universe under Disney. How will that happen though? <laughs> Who knows? Number 96. Ryan Reynolds of course greeted this news in the most Wade Wilson way possible, by posting a pic of Deadpool getting arrested at Disneyland, and by saying that the merger will mean the sexual tension between Mickey Mouse and Deadpool will be uncorked. <laughs> what a man he is. Number 97. There's loads and loads and loads of conflicting news about this, even though nothing has officially been stated. 
Reynolds did say in December of 2019 that they were working with Marvel Studios on a third Deadpool movie though. But where it sits in the continuity and what rating it gets, who knows? Number 98. For what it's worth, ex-Disney CEO Bob Iger has previously promised to keep releasing Deadpool as R-rated, but not necessarily under a Disney or Marvel banner so that the consumer doesn't get confused. But then, how are they working with Marvel Studios to... Oh, God. Number 99. It's also worth noting that upon acquiring them, Disney streamlined the studios of 20th Century Fox and Fox Searchlight to make them just 20th Century and Searchlight. I mention this because Deadpool could well live under these banners instead. Number 100. Writer Paul Wernick has said that Marvel promised to let Deadpool continue to play in his R-rated universe, but when a great idea comes to them, the hope is they can veer into the MCU sandbox. Oh, so unclear. Number 101. There's a rumour doing the rounds, and I will eat my hat if it's true, that Deadpool will show up in the post credit scene of Marvel Studios' upcoming Black Widow movie. The fact here is that there is a rumour going round of this, not that it's happening, because it almost definitely won't happen. So that was 101 facts about Deadpool, again, sort of. What do you think though, should Deadpool be R-rated in his own universe, or be PG-13 and be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or be R-rated in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? But what do you want? Let me know in the comments down below. Also be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already. Join the crew of half a million. I'm still not tired of saying that. In the meantime though, two videos on screen right now, one of which is going to make your dreams come true, and the other one's going to tickle your feet. But which one's going to do what? Only one way to find out. Click, and I'll see you there. Bye!